Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. As you know, in my channel I mostly build robots and I use a lot of electric motors and control with Arduino. And a few people have asked me why it is I don't use pneumatics in my projects. Now I have a feeling that electric motors are going to be easier to accurately control, but in this video we're going to have a look at some budget pneumatics and see if it's feasible to use in other projects. So where can I get some cheap pneumatic cylinders on a budget to have a go with? That's right, from foot pumps. And these are really cheap ones from Halfords in the UK. These are the Halfords Essentials, and they only cost £6.29 each in money. So included with the foot pump, of course, is a pneumatic hose, a pressure gauge, and some mounting hardware here. That means we can actually mount it, and it's got proper pivot points attached already, which is really useful. But obviously a foot pump, when you push air, pushes the air out of the hose and it doesn't let any air back in. It's got a one-way valve on. So what we actually want to do is push air in this hose and actually extend the pump. So this has got a spring on and some other bits and pieces as well. We need to take off and just get the cylinder. We'll take the valve out and that should do nicely. So all you have to do on this particular pump is take one screw out that's holding the pressure gauge and the hose on. Inside you'll find a little spring and a little rubber ball and if you take those out and put it back together you'll find you can push air in the hose and it will push the cylinder out. And that's basically all the one-way valve is made from. So obviously this is a method to do this on an incredible budget. Commercial pneumatic cylinders cost a lot more and usually they have another air intake at the other end so you can actually push the cylinder both ways so we get kind of double action. This one of course doesn't have another air intake at the other end. It does have holes to let the air out. You could try uh, pushing air in those but I think this cap on the end won't be able to withstand the air pressure at this end of the cylinder so for now we're only going to push air in this end uh, which is basically going to push this out like that um, and then we'll have to use a spring to return it to pull it back the other way. The only compressor I've got for testing at the moment is this one which is a tiny airbrush compressor. It only compresses 23 litres a minute and um, it doesn't have much of an air tank to store any compressed air in. So obviously with a cylinder this size it's going to get depleted relatively quickly so I'd expect this compressor to be running pretty much all the time and there's still not be really enough air to go round. So we're going to need to make an additional reservoir and I'm going to use a carbonated drinks bottle. Obviously um, a fizzy drink is quite a lot of pressure if you shake it up and the bottles don't burst that often. In fact I believe they can withstand up to about 150 psi uh, which is sort of 8 or 9 bar probably. I'm only really going up to about 2 bar which is 30 psi so hopefully it'll be safe although I do have to make a hole in it to let the air in and out which will of course be the weak spot. So it's not really recommended to do this ideally we'd have something made of steel but for low pressure it's probably okay. So I'm going to fit this bulkhead fitting quarter inch threaded BSP which tightens up with a nut. I'm going to fit that into a hole in the cap. That's the same fitting that I've got on the airbrush compressor and some of the valves that I'll be showing you in a minute. So I'm just doing a little back-to-back -back test there. I've just got a uh, tail plugged onto my BSP on each of these which has got a, a barb on for a piece of clear tubing. So I've got a regulator on here. I can turn up uh, what I want the pressure to be and it should get there and stop if I turn this right down. It should stop there, it's about one bar. Um, we can push it up to two, and the compressor will try and go until it gets there. So it seems to be holding air though. There is a little leak, I can actually hear air coming out, but it will do for testing. I got some cheap valves off eBay, which are solenoid valves, they're 12 volts, they've got sort of uh, a two to one there, so uh, the one will switch to either of the two, depending on what state the solenoid is in. And again, they've got quarter inch BSPs on, so I've got these uh, tails again that I also got from eBay that will fit there. And we've got a barb for some PVC pipe. So I found the car foot pump thing that normally goes on a tyre fits quite well on one of those barbs. So that's a pretty good solution for attaching that. So my setup is the compressor with a T-piece and the bottle acting as an air reservoir. I've put some gasket sealant on the lid and the thing there so it doesn't leak as much now. We've got our valve. So that's got a pressure and an actuator input and output. The actuator output goes to the cylinder. And basically there's also a, a thing here which is the exhaust, which is marked R. Now what I found with these is that they don't actually work properly below their minimum spec, which according to the label is 0.15 megapascals, which is about one and a half bar. So um, below that basically it just vents the air straight out of the exhaust port. So it's actually using the air pressure to help hold it shut uh, when you activate it. And I've got a 12 volt battery here so I can just apply power and that should open the valve. So we need to get enough pressure in our bottle and in our system to actually switch that valve properly to make this pop up. Right, it's running. Um, it's taking a considerable amount of time to get up to pressure. It's already been running about 30 seconds and we're still well below one bar. The pressure gauge is creeping up slowly. Still going, still going. 
Right, it's about a minute later and we're just passing one bar, so I'm going to give it a go. Let me go and uh, activate this valve. There we go. And now we're back down to about half a bar, so I think... Yeah, the valve doesn't work properly now. You can just hear the air just venting straight out. If I cover the thing there, then it works. But that's no good because we need the exhaust port for a spring return. So uh, basically now we need to let it charge up again. We shall take another minute or two to get enough pressure in the system from this tiny compressor. So uh, obviously that's not really up to the job of a robotic actuator for a robot that needs to move all the time. Uh, we'd be much better off with something that can compress more than uh, whatever we said, 23 litres a minute. Also, this type of compressor you can commonly get for doing car tyres and things or for your accessory socket. Those are probably able to obtain a higher pressure, but they're um, also extremely slow. Um, it's actually much physically smaller than the other compressor. So uh, that's uh, also going to take a very long time. We need something that's up to the job. Right, here we go. This is probably up to the job. It was £110 in money, but that's less than the price of the batteries in Robot X, for instance, and probably pro less than the price of the batteries in my exosuit. Um, it has a 24-litre tank, which means that it will be able to store up lots of air, and it does 180 litres a minute, so about eight times quicker than the other little compressor. <laughs> It's got a pressure gauge on it and it's got a regulator so I can uh, regulate how much um, air pressure we've got. I've got just over two and a half bar there. It took probably 20 to 30 seconds to get there and now I've got 24 litres of compressed air which is 10 times more than I had in my bottle. So it's much quicker and basically it doesn't need to turn back on until we run low on air. It came with various attachments, spraying attachments and so on and also this one for doing car tyres which has got a uh, thing on there which I can put straight on my... Um, barb there it's not really the right fitting it hasn't got so much rub around it so it does leak a little bit but it works for the purposes of testing so now my arrangement is the air comes into the valve here it goes out here and that's it pretty much um, so I can put some power on my solenoid I need to press the handle over here to uh, let air in you can hear there's a little leak but that works fine there's my spring return through the exhaust and I get a lot of goes doing that with no problems at all. So let's see how strong that is. Oh, yeah, that's actually pretty strong even at two bar. Well, I've just turned my regulator up to uh, just under 80 PSI, so about five and a half bar, so over double what we had before. Let's try that. Yeah, that's far more ferocious. Excellent. So I've decided we should get that cylinder and put it on another assembly. So I've got this thing here, which has got uh, some parallel bars and the cylinder goes between this block and the hook there. So that should um, allow me to cut it out of that foot pump assembly and stick it right in there. And that'll make an expanding and contracting link with various parallel parts. So there are all my printed parts ready to go. We're going to use some 2020 extrusion for the sticks. And this is my um, cylinder, which I've cut out of that foot pump, leaving the two pivot points. I've used bits of wood painted black for the ends here. And these parts are obviously aluminium extrusion, but all of the prints are more struder prints from the Lulzbot more struder with its 1.2 mil nozzle. So all of those parts should be really tough. All right, we're getting there. We just need to work out the spacing for the cylinder there across the joint. So I fitted the pneumatic cylinder. The other end uh, is held in here with a bit of bungee that's just springing it into that piece so that it can be easily removed. I've got a piece of studding through the existing pivot point at the other end. So that seems to give me a pretty good range of motion. But let's see what happens when we put some air in it. I found the right air fittings for my compressor hose now, which fits onto there. And that fits onto a quarter inch BSP. So now I can put it onto the tail for my pipe. My solenoid valve there still has its quarter inch BSPs with the tails for the pipe and I found a pipe joiner here which fits quite nicely onto the tyre coupler on the pneumatic cylinder. Alright, so the first test we're on about two and a half bar, which probably is enough. 
Yep, does seem that it is. And obviously we could do the spring return to bring that back again. And then we get multiple goes. So pretty happy with that. I don't think it's something I'll be able to position particularly accurately. We probably need at least a valve that's proportional that lets a smaller amount of air in for something like that. But for packing quite a big punch, obviously that's gonna be great and it's really, really quick. And that really wasn't that much air pressure either. We could probably go down to one bar and it'd still work perfectly well. So obviously this looks like a fighting robot arm that's gonna be able to punch something. But I think I need at least two more axes in the arm to make it fun. And obviously we'll need two arms eventually, but let's see what else we need to do to this arm and some other cylinders and valves. So the plan is to suspend the uh, arm or arms, we'll have two eventually, onto a frame here. And I'm suspending them on this tube here so they uh, sit at a certain angle and they swing nicely forward and backwards. And the frame here is going to be made of wood, basically plywood and some softwood. And that's going to hold the arms at the right angle. Obviously that will eventually be attached to a base which will probably be on wheels. I'm not going to make another walking robot. Um, at some point there'll be a head. But for now we can just attach them and get the arm to swing. Now the body allows us to put some more cylinders on so the aim is there'll be one coming up from the front somewhere and one coming up at the back and you'll notice that the uh, tube doesn't really hold the arm on it's going to be attached with bungees and it's going to be loose in these hooks so that it can swivel in all directions and that should mean we can move in sort of two or three axis by using a combination of those new cylinders. Right here it is so it's all made of wood uh, plywood and softwood screwed and glued together so I'm going to paint that black and we'll get some brackets attached. So I've painted my frame black and I've just clamped that to this stand so uh, that's what this clamp is here so that won't be actually part of it and now we get this nice motion so obviously we've got the top of the arm set at an angle it's about 30 degrees and that means the arm can come back like this and punch forward um, at about the same height. So now I want to push it outwards and cause it to twist like this so we're going to get some more cylinders and stick them from the chassis facing out to the arm so they can push it this way. Right, so I've got two more cylinders and I've 3D printed these balls which fit just onto the end there. And I've got some cups or sockets with some uh, mounts there for the 2020 extrusion that roll nicely in the end. So now we can add some extra axes. I've also got these fork looking things for the back of the cylinder so I can screw the cylinder on there perhaps. It can turn this way and obviously it'll pivot on this direction. So the cylinder can face up there and move around as the arm moves around. I've installed one more cylinder there which uh, of course pushes outwards and I've just put the uh, ball in the cup and there's a bit of bungee cord just holding it in there. So it's kind of compliant and it can stretch uh, but that shouldn't cause me too many problems. Obviously the arm can still move forward because this will extend um, but it can push it wider as well. So I'm going to try and put another one on the back to try and tilt this. But I'm not sure how that geometry is going to work. I've installed the next one at the back here so that still allows the arm to go forward and that works and it also allows it to come out and it kind of rotates. Unfortunately the cylinder hits the mechanism here uh, when it turns like that so that's not going to work as well as I want it to. Really this should come back and then I think it'll be okay but it'll give some interesting results. Obviously moving all those three cylinders around there to move the arm so we'll have to power that up and see what happens. So I've wired in all my cylinders now with a valve each. So those are all there with air distribution that comes here to go to the compressor. And I've got a battery here and a switch, which is what all the wires are. So now each switch operates a different valve. So I don't know if you can hear, there's a couple of leaks. I've put grease on all my uh, connectors, but I still seem to have some air escaping somewhere. But anyway, it works. So uh, the middle one is the straight punch. We've got about... Uh, two or three bar here so just under 40 psi uh, that's the back cylinder and obviously if we use them both at once we can reach forward in a different way and that's the front cylinder so i can use those two to reach wide and then punch a little bit whoops there goes my battery so my geometry is not uh totally ideal but i'm pretty happy with the results that i get there seems to work pretty well And we can do all sorts of different punches and things. At least I can turn the arm uh, inward and outward. So uh, pretty happy with that. I think with a bit of refinement, it could be quite a lot of fun. And two arms, of course. So I'm going to leave this one here. I'm pretty happy that I've managed to make this arm with three cylinders that seem to work first time. And it does pretty much what I expect it to. So obviously pneumatics are a bit harder to um, position accurately than motors. So I'll be using motors for most of my projects. But for something like this where we need brute force, a fast motion, and we need something pretty robust that's going to last for a long time, pneumatics may well be the solution. I'd really like to make a pair of robots with two arms each. 
probably have to be a bit wider than this to get the cylinders in uh, with wheel bases basically that we could take to a show and members of the public could um, make them fight by driving them round. I'd probably like some upper axis on the torso so we can have more cylinders pushing left and right perhaps so they can duck and dive and fight with really simple controls. Obviously we need a compressor each and a power feed and lots of other things but all of that's quite possible. So if you'd like to see a series like that, then let me know in the comments below. It's something I'll have to do in the future because I'm quite busy now, but I think it's quite good for a proof of concept. Obviously the robots could be themed up, perhaps something like Batman versus Terminator, but let me know in the comments below. So don't forget to subscribe to maybe see an update on this, but also there's lots of other projects. And also it's really important to know that all my projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including sneak peeks and pics almost every day, all my videos early, and access to a regular live stream with me. All right, that's all for now.